Impressed by Croatia's stunning World Cup underdog history? Well, rightly so. But don't worry, there are more historical underdogs to come. Who's up next? It's Ireland. Yes, you're hearing that correctly, Ireland. The Republic of Ireland are our next World Cup underdog story. And though Ireland's romance with the competition has been short and sweet, the boys in green have made some magical memories on the world stage over the years, putting some of the top sides in world football to the sword. The 1986 to 1995 Ireland side was certainly seen as a golden generation from the Emerald Isle. The Republic of Ireland had never ever played at a major international tournament up until they reached the European Championships in 1988, as well as the FIFA World Cup in 1990 and 94. So how were these newcomers to the big stage fair? The answer is a bit all over the place, but certainly special. Put it this way, the tiny island of Ireland has around 6 million people. They managed to build a great football side that couldn't quite beat Egypt, Mexico or Norway, fine footballing nations but not the cream of the crop, but they recorded historic results against the Netherlands, Germany, England and Italy. And in 1990, they reached their peak of World Cup quarter-finalists after defeating Romania in a historic penalty shootout. It was in fact England legend and former World Cup winner Jack Charlton that would take charge as coach of Ireland for the most successful period in their history. The team was full of top talent, with names like Ray Houghton, Paul McGrath, John Aldridge and Ronnie Whelan. At Euro 1988 in Germany, Ireland would record a famous 1-0 victory over England draw with the Soviet Union and then just miss out on a semi-final place after defeat to eventual champions, the Netherlands. It was a pretty special debut on the major international stage. And needless to say, ever since, songs have been sung about the fantastic win over the old coloniser, England. For their World Cup debut at Italia 90, Ireland would meet England again. This time they managed a 1-1 draw that would be followed by draws against Egypt and European champions, the Netherlands they progressed to the knockout stage. At home in Ireland, the country had World Cup fever. The nation was bathed in green, white and orange to support the heroes from home and from pubs alike. Work and schools were paused to watch the big games and thousands flocked to Italy. Those who went saw the most historic victory in Irish history. Ireland defeated Romania on penalties in the last 16 of the World Cup, sending the country berserk. Parties ensued and Jack Charlton was the most popular Englishman in Ireland. They were in the World Cup quarterfinals. Sadly, they would face host Italy in a tricky tie in Rome, and a single goal from Toto Scalacci meant Ireland would go no further than the top eight in the world. But what a feat, one that the nation was extremely proud of. In peculiar circumstances, Ireland went unbeaten in qualifying for Euro 1992, but still failed to make it to the finals. Four years later, however, Jack's men were back at a World Cup at USA 94. The Republic of Ireland qualified for the 94 World Cup via a qualification group which included Spain and then European champions Denmark. In the end, Ireland would sneak above Denmark to qualify on goals scored, but this shows just how competitive the squad was at the time, fighting it out with and beating the very best in Europe. The baking heat would be Ireland's nemesis at the 94 World Cup, as the US heated up to 40 degrees over the summer. However, it wouldn't stop another famous victory. In what was a little taste of revenge for the previous World Cup, Ireland managed to beat eventual finalist Italy 1-0 in their opening group game. They would go on to secure safe passage to the knockout phase with a draw against Norway. Sadly, Ireland would melt then in the Citrus Bowl in Florida as they were defeated 2-0 by Holland. But back-to-back -back World Cup knockout stages were a joy for this nation of under 6 million. Ireland had endured a very difficult century that started with rebellions in the War of Independence against British occupation. That was followed by the partition of the country, the Irish Civil War and decades of troubles and violence in the north. As well as being hampered by a tricky history and small population, Ireland is a country that is sports crazy, perhaps to the detriment of its football side. Many fine young athletes choose to play football, but others go for rugby or Gaelic games, Ireland's national sports so there isn't exactly a lot of footballers to choose from. In the 90s, Ireland rode the wave of having a top-level squad. That was bolstered again in 94 by the likes of a young Roy Keane, but they wouldn't reach Euro 96, losing again to Holland, this time in a one-off playoff in Liverpool. Jack Charlton's last game in charge of a fine era for Ireland. Major tournament victories against Italy and England were the stuff of dreams for Ireland whose domestic league has also struggled to develop into one of Europe's best. 
Fans were delighted at such performances that took the island of Ireland to the last eight teams in the world. They were certainly punching above their weight. This shows in today's football. Ireland's national side have not qualified for a major championship since 2016, where they again famously defeated Italy. However, in general lately, times have been pretty lean. The teams of the 90s were full of fine Premier League players, but now Ireland find themselves dipping into the championship for the bulk of their starting XI. A young squad means times are looking up, but as of late, there hasn't been much happiness for Ireland matchgoers. Ireland did have a strong side in 2002 though, when they managed their way through a qualifying group with Portugal and Holland to defeat Iran in an international playoff and reach the finals in Korea and Japan. The 2002 campaign was marred by Captain Roy Keane's fallout with manager Mick McCarthy, but those who remained for Ireland, like Robbie Keane, Damien Duff and Shea Given, helped to form a formidable squad with typical Irish fighting spirit. The fans made their way to East Asia in their droves, and seas of colours flooded the stadia to roar on the boys in green. They drew with Cameroon, but also crucially drew against eventual finalist Germany. This big result against the Germans and an emphatic 3-0 win over Saudi Arabia was enough for Ireland to reach the World Cup knockout stages again. As they sing, it's very hard to beat the Irish. This time, Spain were the big name opponents. 1-1 after normal time and extra time, only a penalty shootout would see Spain squeeze past Ireland into the next round. On the day, Ireland were the better side and even missed another penalty during the game that would have set up a rather attractive quarter-final tie against South Korea. Not to mention they were missing captain and best player Roy Keane. What could have been, eh? Nonetheless, this was another fantastic performance for the Emerald Isle, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spain and Germany in 2002. Ireland do seem to struggle when they should win, but find another gear when they are massive underdogs. It's romantic in one sense and frustrating on the other. They also famously defeated world champions Germany to qualify for Euro 2016. Now on the road to Euro 2024, they face a massive task to qualify in a group that includes World Cup finalists France and quarter finalists the Netherlands. Ireland will be looking for another heroic upset or two to reach the finals in Germany next summer. Ireland are a small nation with a tough history, and that small population is split between three or four super popular sports but the fighting spirit of the island has shown in some famous and heroic games over World Cups and European Championships, even resulting in a remarkable World Cup quarterfinal place. Ireland have only ever qualified for three World Cups. It's very difficult to do so, but they've got to the knockout rounds in all three of those tournaments, and they've proved along the way they're capable of a big upset. Uncomfortable as favourites and buoyed as underdogs, perhaps with some of the best travelling and most vibrant fans on the international stage, Ireland are fantastic competitors that add to any tournament they reach, no matter how sporadic their visits may be. Stay tuned for our next international underdog story.